so um all of a sudden this thing is over and we're like okay so let's get jobs <laughs> <laughs> so natasha goes into agency and me this time uh you're still in uni it's uni is ending now uni has ended so oh, now uni has ended, yes. yeah so yeah. now eh <laughs> Uni is over, what are you going to do? And I remember the night I graduated, I went to K2. But I used to talk to the Kauna all the time. Yeah. Then he was like... The guy with dreads. Yeah, he's like, do you want a job? I was like, me, I've just graduated in marketing, my friend, I can be your marketing manager. This is Saturday, I've graduated. He's like, can you come to work on Monday? I was like, uh, do give me a week. <laughs> <laughs> the other Monday. So I came out of university into a job. What? Yeah. And you, what were you doing for K2? I was there. It was K. It, it was the K's. K one, K two, K International, Small World. Yeah. So I was supposed to be the marketing manager, and they had this. Sami was Sami was great. Don't get me wrong, but he had this brilliant younger brother called Maura. Brilliant. Okay, that guy taught me so much stuff about. Okay, so things are not happening. What do we do? I don't know make a party what do you mean make a party call it a red party what does that mean it's just that put red balloons call Sman of red tell them to come and tell Sman of at a cheaper price just create something okay some buzz it doesn't have to cost us anything so people can come you know and those days clubhouse was clubhouse yeah i remember the that pictures. guy castle was brilliant and i really liked that he would he would he would tell me what to do but sometimes he would ask me what should we do mm. and then i'll give him an idea that he knows is bad but he wants me to understand it's bad so he's like okay but i worry about this no but we'll tell this and this will do this and sometimes my bad idea would be good mm. and sometimes it would be bad and he'd be like why was it bad because you told me to do this and i did <laughs> do it he was just so clever and innovative and Wow, he he passed away a couple of years ago. He was just I think honestly in my life in I think maybe that guy taught me the most lessons. Yeah, in terms of if it's not working the way you need it to work, come up with something on your own. Stop waiting for people to do it for you, okay? People are not buying your albums, do a gig, make a gig. Mm. Okay? Do a gig so people can come. The radio stations are not playing you. Play it on internet. Sing all your songs on Facebook. Sing mm. them all. Just sit and sing them. Make it happen. You can't just sit back and be like, well, you know, guys are not coming because it's January. It's clubhouse. <laughs> yeah. Guys don't have room, so they're not coming. It's like, so what? Make them come. All you have to do is give them the impression you're doing something exciting and new. They will come. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Okay. He was a wonderful teacher. So when I left Clubhouse, how long were you at Cl- Clubhouse? Two years. And in that time, music you shelved it. I shelved it completely. Wow. So after two years, like, was it two years? Maybe three. It was a long time. Maybe hmm. three. Maybe three years. So when I so left, so now Clubhouse, you've left Audible. There's no. You're not meeting. No, but there was nothing. They were not doing anything. Do you remember there was a think back? There's a point when Kalamashaka went dark. There was no hard stone. Yes. There was nothing coming out of audio vault. Yeah. It's like everything had died. Yep. You know? So I I I I I left Clubhouse and I remember that I started working at I, I worked at Fat for a little bit. Yes, with Mike Strano. Yeah, but he treated me very badly, so I left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like we we going to tell it today. <laughs> and this time now, I don't know where I met Ted. I don't know where I bumped into him, but now he has started Blue Zebra. Mm-hmm. The one now which is ah, on Lenana Road. Oh, yes, on Lenana, on Lenana yes, Road. Yes. So that's busy. Busy, baby. So I came back and we started um, we started trying to record. I don't even think if we, I don't know if we actually put anything out at that point. And I think I had a lot of free time then because this was the point I was wondering, what are you, you know, you entered that club of sync because it worked. Mm. What are you doing? What is your plan? What do you want to mm. do with your life? And you know how you wake up every day and just do stuff, but you don't really have mm. any plans. So I would go there every day hoping that we can record stuff. And then oh, we, we did the song that's Unnecessary Noises album. With featuring DJs as well. Yes, we did okay. that song then. Mm-hmm. 
na yeye Penzi ni tele So tafadhali kama badhani nitakubali Nje kutusumbua misi jali nenda mbali Mimi na yeye Ngani milele For some reason, we just never did anything for me. And I couldn't understand why. And I asked and I was told, because you're too fat. You've put on too much weight. Nobody would be interested in you. What? And, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, let me just oh, keep no. helping here. Stop there. Let's take this thing a bit back. <laughs> you record this super amazing. In fact, on Necessary Noise too. that's my best song. That's it was I... something that I was to be word. Okay, since you really want something fine, you guys make this song work. But for, I'm like, let's work on something for me, yeah. And then uh, it was it was said that you know you can't write, so you have to wait until I write for you. So so you because you can't do it, you can't write, okay? You you can't. And I was like, okay, I guess I can't write. I just have to come and keep doing what is expected of me. I was training Kina Dij and training Kina Wairi at that time. So that time, me and Wairi and Dij, we really got tight. <laughs> We really got tight. We sang out together. Because it was far. The bus stop was far. <laughs> it went from Lenana Road to Aguin Square. Yes, yes. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we walked on in Square and cut the matatu and we would talk. And we really, really got tight, by the way. And um, the guy I, told you you can't sing you, because you're fat. I can't record you. How will we sell you? Who's going to want to look at you? You know, this, it's not going to work. Okay? So I was like, okay. And I didn't know what to do. What did that do to you? I I was upset. I remember being upset about it. But then, I think then again, I, when I was young, I think I just didn't catch a lot of feelings. I'd be like, okay, Nimba. Anyway, let's move on. So I went to, remember Empire? No, Episode. 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 Do you remember Episode? Oh, yeah. Episode was a video library above Steers. That's Steers on Windy Bingo. Oh, yeah. So I went there to get video tapes. And I used to go there almost every day. And I'm sitting, I'm getting some tapes. Who walks in? Eric, I've been looking for you, Atemi. Can you join my band? I was like, yeah, I'm free. I'm free, I can join your band. Hold on. You're inter- in fact, because you mentioned <laughs> Eric, right? Now, first of all, we're shooting at the Elephant, <laughs> yeah. uh, where Eric's studio is, and where they operate from. But let's go back, because now you've brought back Eric. Mm. We can now go back to that story for Bruce Odiambo and... Okay, take us there. So you go. <laughs> so, so I also remember that I knew Eric because remember Five TTBC Alive. Five Alive. Hey. Plus, we all lived on Aguin's Kodek. So us guys lived near Ayaya. Then Kina Eric used to live near Black Rose, right? Yes. Apartment. And Kina Victor used to live on El Omara Quet. And the Kazibwes lived a little further down. So we were all friends. Yes. Again, all friends of my older sister. <laughs> who can see, <laughs> you know. Yes. But Eric was one of the ones, even when I was young, he was like, you can really see. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like... And there's also Bapo where you're all together. Yeah, there's Bapo where we're all together. But then I remember the night, I remember the night Five Alive were told they couldn't sing at Baptist anymore. I remember that night. Okay. It was an all-night Kesha. And, you know, I'm really censoring things. I'm like, there are many things I can't see. <laughs> like, you know, you're safe. Don't sell people. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's just say a gospel musician that night was apologizing for making somebody pregnant. Mm-hmm. And he played and he apologized and said I'll never do it again. And it was a Kesha and everybody was wonderful, but five alive that time they picked up and they were performing at alternative venues. Mm-hmm. So they had mm-hmm. performed at Libra House that night. Mm-hmm. And they were finishing Libra House to come and perform at Baptist. And they got there and they were told by the leadership you f- you're from performing at a disco. You can't and I remember they were walking to the car and I can't remember who it was. It might have been Bob. He was like, these people are treating us so badly. We didn't even drink. <laughs> <laughs> we should have just been drinking all this time. So I honestly think, I honestly think that, that was church the... pushed Five Alive away mm. from Christianity mm. because in retrospect, that was a terrible thing to do. These are boys who are out there in the world. I think that 80% of their repertoire was gospel. Mm. You know, they had a couple of pop songs, you know, on Dio, on Dio and stuff like that, but they didn't have anything sexy. Take off your clothes and show me love tonight. <laughs> you know, they were pretty clean. Yeah. So I'm like, these boys are performing at an alternative venue, right? And singing gospel songs. And then they Imagine. want to come home. They needed to be natural. Yeah. In fact. Yeah. And, and be to keep doing what you're doing. Eh? Yeah, but you, you see, see what happened is yeah. Pete, a couple of years later, Pete came out and he was like, me, I'm doing it. I'm going to carnival to sing my songs. You don't want me to sing in church? I don't care. I'm ministering. Okay? But at that point, I don't know if any, because also I was younger, but I don't know if anybody stood up and said, Church, this is wrong. You shouldn't do this. This is a terrible thing that you should do. Mm -hmm. So I was around and I heard the stories. And I remember because, uh, who was it? Joe was my my, my boyfriend. (laughs) Joe from Forever Life? Yeah, I keep telling him. (laughs) There's something wrong because he was 19 and I was 15. Like, you were kind of, you were kind of R. Kelly, okay. man. It was kind of like R. Kelly. <laughs> so this is how I was in on the story. You know, this is how I was in on the story. This is how I knew. And then Victor says, younger sister Chichi was my best friend. Mm. So I was. I, they used to your see family, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're family, and Eric and Joe were friends. So I remember even when I was in high school, they came to see me one visiting day, and they were chased. But I was so popular. Oh my God! You know, Eric came to see Kina Demi. Wow, she's so popular. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how I knew this, and you could tell because you think that we were we were we were very young Christians. I think also as a, as a Christian girl, when I was fifteen, I was I was very naive. You know, like really naive. I remember one time my Christian nineteen-year-old boyfriend was like, "Close your eyes." I know you're trying to kiss me. I'm a Christian. No, I cannot agree. <laughs> So, you know, I was pretty naive then. So, <laughs> so as this guy starts getting more interested in clubbing and going out, and I'm like, I could never, ever, you know, and the worst thing I can do is, I know hero. All, there's a hero. <laughs> I know all the words, you know? So obviously, and then they went, they all went to the States, and, and that's what happened. So this is, Eric hadn't finished Berkeley. But he was trying to, I don't know if he was, I have to ask him. Let me just guess for him. I think he was coming back to kind of reestablish himself, go back to some courses, reestablish himself. And that time he was going to do Hifa or Haifa in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. And then he was going to do um, Festival, not Festival Mundial. Yeah, Festival Mundial, right? So he wanted to put together a band real quick and mm. rehearse and learn the parts. And he was like, do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah okay and he was like yeah i was looking for your number i didn't know i was gonna find you because i really wanted you to come and sing back up for me and i was so surprised because i was like you know you just used to have kina mosimera and nice people me i didn't know it was something you'd be interested in <laughs> so we started singing back up for eric and we travel and this time shiba was still abroad so we spent a lot of time together right mm-hmm. and we would have very deep conversations and he would say so why don't you write and i would tell him as a matter of fact because I can't. What? How do you know? Because this other guy told me that I, I couldn't write. And he'd be like, oh my God, I can't be. <laughs> no, you can't. And I'd be like, yeah, no. no that's he, funny. He knows I know you has not been able to write. Yeah. First, yeah. Yeah, because that's what they told the me. Seed, the yeah. seed germinated within you. Yeah. So I was like, I, I guess I can't. And he was like, if anybody can write, it's you. And I was like, mm, I don't want to die it. So then his friend, then, so this is a story that's in the archives. <laughs> so Vixas doing well seasoned. Yeah. 
Kenya. Mm-hmm. And remember that we are all friends at this point. We've just done stuff with Eric, so we all know each mm-hmm. other. We're not just music people, we are friends. Because yeah. we used to hang out a lot together. In fact, we watched a lot of, I think we watched X-Men for the first time with Eric and Vic, you know. So Vic is like, okay, so I'm doing this Christmas thing. The first one? Yeah. So far, I want you to come along. Yeah. This time, uh, Tim is close friends with Sarah, so Sarah is in it, and Nitaru, she's definitely in it, yeah. and Eric is like, hey, why don't you put a Temi in it? And I remember that night, because I, I had a conversation with someone about it the other day, and we were rehearsing for Eric's play Luanda, which was then being produced by Stalin Q, and we would rehearse all day, and I had a little bit of a cold, right? So Vic is like, when you finish work, come let's do it. He came, pick me up, he came, and those days were the days of Samawati, before we start singing, let's drink some pints. So we drank a little bit of pints, right? I remember I wasn't even tipsy, but we drank a little bit of pints and we started singing the song. I can hear that I'm off, but I don't understand why. And I'm like, because you have a cold, you're not hearing. You know how sometimes, mm. yeah. So the next morning, I'm like, I want to, I want to come and redo it. And guys are Chengai me, and I'm like, what's up with this? So the album comes up and June sings the song. So I find out this is because, one, <laughs> Tim told Vic, this chick can't sing. She can't sing, forget about it. And Vic was irritated with me because of something else, so he agreed. He didn't agree I couldn't sing, but he was like, okay, yeah, fine, yeah, if you don't want her, yeah. it's okay. Yeah? So Eric hears about it, and like those, we, those days we were really tight, and he's like, Mimi, can you be any talking? You can be any talking, you talking, why you have like. That's okay, forget about it, let's do it. So we move on, and I remember that those days I had the gift of keeping grudges. I didn't yeah. speak to Victor for two years. Like he would come and say hi, and I'd be like, I don't know who's talking to me. Because he knew he had done something bad. Yes. So later on... Um, so you were not on the world season? I was not on the first world season, I'm on the second one. Which is Whoa. interesting, because the Christmas brand is my thing now. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't on the I wasn't on the original well, season. Yeah. It was upsetting because we had thought about it. We thought with the harmonies, what the beach are gonna be. We chosen the verses to hear somebody else singing the whole thing that the way you had planned for it. So who sang it instead June, of you? June sang it. June Gashui. Yeah, but the thing is, I, I want to say back in the day, but it's things like that happen all the time, right? That uh, and and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but as a woman, it's much a mistake is taken in a much more serious way. Mm. So Tim thought you didn't sing well because you were drunk. And I was like, eh, if you drank pints, you know two pints can't make you drunk, number one. Number two, I had a cold, guys. Mm. When you have a cold, your ears will be a little bit off. And it's not the in the deep of the cold, it's at mm. the end. It was mm. the end where you just mm. can't hear that well. Yeah, And I could tell. So the next morning, by the way, and I remember those are not the days I don't think guys even had cell phones. So I woke up and went to phone booth to call Vic. Hey, I don't like how it sounded. Because he put it from your lip. I'm like, I don't like how it sounded. I sound really off. Can we just do it again? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you when it is. He never actually came out and told me, we're not using you. I heard snippets to other people. Well, you know, Tim didn't feel like you were good enough. And uh, he felt like... And I think also, Tim was very, very safe then. And he didn't just like the idea of people drinking at the studio. Mm. Yeah? So, fast forward, Tim tells Eric, I want to do... He actually came to me and he was like, I hear that you don't like me. And I told him, because you told Vic that I couldn't sing. Mm. <laughs> and Because he, he was, you know, he's really straightforward. Yeah. But we didn't even know each other that well, so I don't know why it upset him so much that yeah. I didn't like him. And he's like, no, I never said that. I'm like, yeah, you did. And that's why I was not on the thing. He said, no, I told him I didn't like that you were drunk. And I was like, I wasn't. We had a whole conversation about it. Yeah. I wasn't. And this and this. And he was kind of like, okay, let's clean slate. I don't know anything about your singing. Let's, don't, let's, let's just know each other now. Because he was getting very much involved with Eric mm-hmm. in the studio and stuff like that. And it would be awkward because, like I said, I had a, I had a gift of holding a grudge. <laughs> I could really hold <laughs> it <laughs> and show you every time I met you. Hi. So, uh, so at this time, have, that means you've not worked with no, Tim? No, we've not worked with Tim. Okay. So... He tells Eric, hey, I'm, I'm doing a demo. Can you send me one of your babies? Eric laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> and remember, we still have to come back to you recording Daima. <laughs> so he said, but that was just, it was, it was just that. We went up to Green Corner, and those days we used to be paid in chicken. Because you know there wasn't any. What do you mean in chicken? Re- there was really nice chicken at that Green Corner. So Bruce would be like, come and sing this song for Eric. Then go to Green Corner and eat chicken and Black Forest cake. We're like, oh my God! 
<laughs> That's how. Because I don't think I I don't know if there was money for the album anyway. I don't mm. think I don't know how much Eric paid for the album. So in those days, if you sang BBs for someone. You just sang babies yeah, for them on the album. Yeah. It was okay. It and didn't a big deal. You smiled about it. You don't it. expect the guy to pay you for it. Yeah. And when Eric came to Kenya, yeah, it was on BGVs. We never expected him to call us to sing. Mm. Yeah. So if for, for that particular, the whole song was written, You, he, the harmonies were laid out. Bruce was the one who was... He was the engineer, engineer on the session and Eric had left his vocals. So we, he added us in the BGVs. I don't remember if it was a B. He wanted to add some extra BGVs. So there's some parts he just mm-hmm. added us. So even when we met Eric, he was like, hey, how did you guys do those extra BGVs? That was really nice. But it was BGVs. So now when the song went and became the monster of a song that it is, one of Kenya's biggest songs. The one, the version that's Kenya's biggest song isn't that version. What? Yeah, he re-recorded it. As he went along, he recorded it. It's possible those days... It's possible when we recorded it, it was Kenya only. Because mm. remember, there was an English uh, one. Yeah. So maybe when he came back and he thought about it and he was like, no, let's like, rewrite this in yeah. Swahili. Yeah? So I think when we recorded it, it was Kenya only then. Yes. Because then when he recorded that, Is that when he's playing the piano? Yes. It makes no sense for us to die To lose our costly soul When blood was shed and tears were wet to gain our self-control our neighbors die in grief having lacked in love's belief now the soil's contaminated with the blood of hatred so I White for peace in Kenya My pride must rent my joy Always will be Kenyan And pride and strength and joy So, fast forward. Uh, fast forward and he's like, let me send you my baby So I come and Tim has this song and plays it for me And I'm like, and he would, and he would sing it to me Smile. That's how Tim says. Your eyes. <laughs> That's a bad voice. That's a bad voice. So I sang the song, but I really, uh, the truth is, I really enjoyed working with him because number one, he was, you're a fabulous singer, right? I need to push you to make you sing better. Tim never took my first take. Never. He would be like, listen, okay, now sing it again. Okay, now take this. You see, we recorded it. Go home and listen to it. Come back and sing it next week. So when you lay down the vocals, you've really thought it through. Tim would mm. make me do 10 tracks of ad-libs and he would listen through them and pick. So when I had that finished song half the time, I'm like, oh, that was a clever ad-lib. I don't remember doing that. Because mm-hmm. you just sing and sing and sing it through mm. and sing it through. So the only thing that was permanent was how we do the BGVs the first time. Because mm. it's BGVs, they're not going to change. Yeah. But how the lead is going to be done, how all these things are going to be done. If you wanted to come back and change it, he would be like, any time, time yeah. come and do it. Right? Most producers will take my first take. That was fabulous. And I'm like, I can do better. Push me. Mm. <laughs> Push me. You don't know what you can get if you keep going. Sometimes it might end up being the very first take. Sometimes it's take 18. Mm. The team is like, this is the one. Right? Tim will keep pushing until he finds the one. Which until he, he finds the one that he yeah. likes. Yeah. yeah. And that time he was doing Happy for Summer. Summer. The group. For Cox Studio. It was a demo. Cool. Not for not a Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola pop stars. Coca-Cola pop stars. Yeah. yeah. So it was for them. I don't know why they didn't take the song. There are very many different versions. Mm. Some people say that the tune was not enough. Like the money that they offered Timmy was like, are you serious? No, this is too little. Another story is that when they listened to it, they were like, Apanat, where's the Kufanya Kama you dame? Just keep it. So I don't know which story. <laughs> All you, I know is that you give them they, a good yeah. complete song. They're like, yeah, those vocals I can't reach. Yeah. <laughs> so all I know is that they didn't take it, and he told me, "Let's let's make it." And mm. I was like, "Okay," and that that is the first version. The version that's on my album is the first version that we recorded. It's the demo. It's the demo. Then.
that smile, your eyes, a big heart you have inside. I don't think that you know you make me feel so, so you're like a bright and sunny day. Bends away, you make me so happy. I don't know what to do. Nimekuwa kama wazimu. Mahabubani wewe tu. It's what someone listened to and yes. well, ah, no wonder. I it's can't the demo. Them. It's actually the demo. <laughs> so I went and I played it for Ted. Remember that? I'm, and he was like, it's all right. <laughs> what? It's okay, but you know, this kind of music is just never going to catch up in Kenya. So I was like, okay. 